Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. New Prospect Elementary School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. This is Amy Lemons at New Prospect Elementary School in Alpharetta, Georgia. How do you hear me? New Prospect Elementary, we got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. I'm Andrew and I'm in the third grade. What surprised you most the first time you came to the space station? What surprised me most was the size of the space station. We train in full-scale mock-ups, but they're always just a small portion of the space station. And uh, seeing it all put together really surprised me. It's, it's much bigger than I thought it was. Thank you. My name is Brady, and I'm in the fifth grade. What is the difference in training in the neutral buoyancy lab and actually doing the spacewalk? Good question. Inside the suit, it feels a lot the same. Number one thing is the view. When we're in the neutral buoyancy lab, we've got concrete, the edges of the pool, you know, around us, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet away. Out here, we've got the earth 250 miles away underneath us. So that's a big change. The other thing, is that, well, if things aren't quite working right, or gravity's pulling our tools down, or we're falling away, we can ask our divers that are down there helping us train to help us out and give us an assist. But when we're up here in space outside, there's no way to help. You gotta figure it out or get your EVA buddy to come help you. Thank you. My name is Phoenix and I'm in fourth grade. Do you have a sense of direction while floating around in microgravity? That's a, it's a pretty interesting question. So right now we, uh, we look like we are standing up and so we have lights above us. And so we think just like at home, you have your lights on the ceiling, so that is up. But then you can do this like Randy's doing. And for him right now, it looks like he, for him, that he's standing up. So there's really no sense of direction other than maybe the writing on the walls and the lights that we have, which makes it really neat when you're working, you can get in all different kinds of spots and it all seems to work fine. So it's a, it's a great place to live and work. For me, the hardest thing to do in space, especially when I first got up here, was keep track of my stuff. I'm, uh, like most of us, used to putting st something down, and even then it can be easy to, for example, lose your keys or something like that. But here, if you put something down and don't carefully secure it in place, it will definitely float away. So that was the hardest thing for me, and still can be a little challenging, but it improves quite a bit over time. Thank you. I'm Brandon in the second grade. What, ha what happens to your body if you don't exercise in space? What happens to our body if we don't exercise in space? Well, imagine yourself with your shoes. And if your shoes are not tied tight, when you try to run, what happens? Your laces get loose and your shoes come off. Well, it's not like our skin comes off, but think of our bones inside our body as your foot inside the shoe. And think of the shoe and the laces, you gotta keep them tight so they can go ahead and work together when you run, right? Well, our muscles keep tension on our bones, and that keeps our bones from going ahead and getting thinner and thinner to become fragile and break. And so we have to exercise to keep our muscles, keep tension on the bones so we stay strong. So when we come back to earth, we don't, our bodies don't end up like a bunch of jello. Hi, my 
Well, I, I sleep. I, I sleep great in space, and what's cool is that my little bedroom, which is like a small closet, is on this sidewall. So when I sleep, I sleep like this. I sleep standing up. Randy, he's on the ceiling, so he sleeps, which looks like that, which is kind of weird. And then Mark's on the other side, so he also sleeps standing up. And then we have somebody who's sleeping on the floor and it looks like he's sleeping underground. But it's really comfortable because you're inside of a bag that is floating around. And I'll tell you, it is some of the best sleep I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Hi, my name is Matthew. I am in the fourth grade. What is your favorite thing to do in space? My favorite thing to do in space is go around corners fast. So um, because you can float, I love kind of flying like Superman into a corner with my hands in front of my body, body and then grabbing onto a handrail at the corner and then let my feet spin around and then letting go at the right time so I change directions and start traveling feet forward instead of uh, hands forward. Dangerous. Thank you. Sorry, we had a hard time here and there. So how do we celebrate uh, holidays and special events? Well, we do it together. We're like a little space family up here. And so we can have special food. We usually have a dinner. Sometimes we'll have a movie. Um, but what we try and do is, you know, take care of each other because we're all we got up here. And then when we're done with our space family, then we're able to get on the phone and talk to our family down on Earth and celebrate with them and with friends. All right, well, Randy's going to help me out. And so water is really, really interesting. You know, when I was a school teacher, I would tell my students that water is really sticky. You can actually take a glass of water and you can float a needle on top of the water. So in space, and I'll try not to make too much of a mess. I have uh, some tropical punch and you can see maybe that it's making a big water bubble because of the surface tension. It stays just like this, like a bubble and you can be very careful. And then you can drink it, but it can get messy. So we try not to play with our food too much. My name is Kyle and I am in the fifth grade. Joe, does it feel different going 17,500 miles per hour inside the space station versus when you're out on a spacewalk? You know, it actually feels just the same because in both situations, because we're basically falling towards the earth, but keep missing it because we're going so fast, uh, it feels like we're floating and because everything's moving together. So the sensation of uh, moving around outside the space station is largely different just because of the sense of space you have, how, how far you can see all the time. And also, uh, it's not quite as easy to turn a corner quickly because you have a very heavy suit on and if you do anything really fast, that suit's going to want to keep moving, and it's much harder to stop it. So uh, we tend to move very slowly outside, 
uh, and very carefully outside. Thank you. I'm David in Thurgood. What is your favorite food to eat in space? I'd be willing to bet my favorite food in space might be your favorite sp food on Earth. When we have uh, cargo vehicles come up, they bring ice cream. And because we don't have it all the time up here, it tastes extra special good, space ice cream. And so that's definitely my favorite. Now, we do have Jello, and we surprised everybody with that a few uh, weeks ago at dinner. And that's a lot of fun, too, because you saw water, it jiggles around. Well, Jello jiggles even more, and you don't get your clothes as messy. Thank you. I'm Lauren in the fifth grade. When did you know you want to be an astronaut? Did someone inspire you? Well, you know, I was probably about your age when I started thinking about being an astronaut. We used to watch uh, these films of the astronauts that walked on the moon and I thought that was pretty cool and then I like to read a lot and so I read a lot of books about people going to different planets and traveling in space and I always thought man that would be neat to go do that um, and then I started studying different things at school and then it wasn't until I was older and I was a school teacher that I saw that NASA wanted to hire some astronauts and so I went ahead and I applied for the job and I got lucky and here I am and I would say my biggest inspiration was probably my grandfather, who uh, never had a chance to go to college, but he was very interested in science. And he showed me those films, and he's the one that, that brought those dreams to my mind. And so I thank him for that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenna in the fourth grade. Mark. What were your emotions on your first spacewalk? My emotions on my first spacewalk were very complex. There was a mixture of excitement, um, an intense desire to uh, pay attention to every detail possible, and at a good dose of fear. Um, I'm not sure if it was fear of uh, getting physically hurt or fear of messing something up in public. Uh, and also a sense of amazement when I was working and I looked at the view. The, the backdrop for my work was incredible and constantly changing. Hi, my name is James in the third grade. Would any of you like to go to Mars? I think it would be great to go to Mars. Unfortunately, I think I'm probably born a little too early for that because we're figuring out how to build the next spaceships are going to go outside of low Earth orbit, and then they're going to go moon, Mars, and then beyond. The problem is, is they're not going to be built, so I'm probably too old to do it. I bet you guys are the ones that are going to be going to Mars, so make sure you study your science and your math and all those interesting things and how things work and be excited about finding out new things because we're going to need you and I'm going to need you, we're going to need you to do all that so we can watch and be excited when you step on Mars. Thank you. Hi, my name is Logan and I'm in the fifth grade. When you're out on a spacewalk, how do you eat and drink? Yeah, well, that's kind of a bummer. Um, when we're inside of our spacesuits, we do have a drink bag, so we can drink water, so that's kind of nice, but we don't have anywhere for food. And we start getting into our suits right around 8 o'clock in the morning, and then we probably get out of the suits at maybe you know six or seven at night and so we go all day without food and we know that our buddies that are inside are having lunch and they're eating uh, but we can't eat until we get back so while we're out there we're thinking about that good food that's going to be waiting for us when we get back thank you I'm in second 
great. Could you throw a somersault right now? They look really beautiful. The thing is, we're only 250 miles closer to them than you are, so they're not really that much bigger, but they are a lot brighter and a lot clearer because we're not looking through the atmosphere to see them. And the other part is, is because we don't have city lights or any of that stuff around us, there you can see a lot more stars. It's just filled with stars on a dark night. And it's just amazing that those are just the stars. And you know how our sun has all the planets around it in our solar system? Imagine these bigger suns that are out there and all, that we see the stars of, how many gazillions of planets there must be out there around those stars that we need to go explore. Thank you. I am Shalman in the fourth grade. Do you have internet in space? Yes, we do have the internet in space, but the internet that we have in space is really, really, really slow. So we don't spend a lot of time on the internet. Um, we spend most of our time maybe looking out the window, looking at our beautiful planet, uh, taking pictures, uh, floating around the space station. Uh, but we do have things that are sent up to us so we can watch movies up here as well. And we have a great telephone that we can use to call our family and friends. But yeah, the internet is, uh, it's a little bit slow for us. Thank you. My name is Tidish Lee in the first grade. Hi, Randy and Mark. How do your children feel about you being in space? I know when I was initially getting ready to launch, my family was a little worried because it's a very dramatic event. But I know that they're also right now enjoying the fact that I'm in space. I get to talk to my wife and children about once a week all together. And we have fun looking out the cupola window together. I'm able to share the video of what we're seeing. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's fun to share with your family. Well, you've heard some of the things we like to eat, we like to fly around, um, but I think a lot of us really enjoyed looking outside at the planet and taking pictures. And we just before this, we finished going one whole orbit around the Earth, 90 minutes, where we were taking pictures. And people on the ground were putting the pictures of what they were doing together on the Internet with our pictures. So if you guys go to One World, One Orbit, you can see what we were just doing, and we're trying to share that fun with all of you. The other thing we also do is we have some toys. I've got a daughter in second grade, and she picked out this for me before I left. I think you guys have seen one of these before. And so we have fun playing with it and sharing that with you guys too. Thank you so much, Randy, Mark, and Joe. You have truly inspired our next generation of space explorers, and we will always remember this experience. Thank you so much. And thank you, New Prospect. You guys are our next generation of explorers, so get ready, because it's moon, Mars, and beyond. 
station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. And thank you to all the, all the participants from New Prospect Elementary School Station. We are now resuming operational audio communication.